what's up guys. Today, I'll show you a science fiction thriller film, Tim Can. Spoiler ahead, watch out and take care. The movie is about a scientist who finds herself confined and tries to find a cure as the world faces a deadly plague. It mainly focused on the point of view of the scientist. The film begins with the scientist named Fred, sadly listening to her lover's voice message at home. Then, she goes to work through the bus show, where they all wear personal protective equipment. On their way to the laboratory, she witnesses the infected people on the street. Simultaneously, the news announces that due to the lack of medical professionals in the workforce and the rising cost of private clinics, only a few infected receive medical care. Later, Fret tests the sample successfully and believes it can be a breakthrough. She tells her colleague about it and shows the result. However, her colleague informs her that the kids are scheduled to be moved to the quarantine facility. Fret gets worried, so she visits the boy confined in a room and checks up on him. She discovers that the other kid was taken to another facility, which makes her sad. Then, Fret learns that her ex-husband named John is scheduled to be placed in the chamber and will be put to sleep to impede his disease from advancing. One day, Fret wears protective gear. As she goes down the building, she feels someone is following her. Upon opening the door, she suddenly feels dizzy. Then, someone smashes her protective helmet, making her inhale a fog that knocks her off. Later, Fret wakes up, only to find herself confined in a tin chamber, intubated. There are several hoses, and the chamber has some liquid. Fret feels weak, but she desperately yells and asks for help. Surprisingly, Fret hears her ex-husband's voice, who tells her he is in another pod. She asks him to let her out, but John says he cannot. They do not know how long they have been inside, but Fret doesn't know why she's confined inside the tin chamber, and she can clearly remember she did not volunteer to be taken in the chamber, unlike John. Then the lights turn off, and there are flashes of some colored lights on Fret's face. After that, there is a yellow light in the chamber. Fret asks John about the meaning of it, but he is also clueless. Subsequently, Fret detaches the catheter, and then a memory flashes back. It was when Fret was giving aid to the infected John. Then John signed a contract about the preservation of the infected, handed it to Fret, and said that he volunteered to confine himself inside the tin chamber, and he misses her. Fret got shocked when she sees the dual admission contract signed by John, which also indicates a healthy individual to be admitted with an infected person in the Preservation Corporation, which is her and John. Fret got upset, she declined, returned the contract to him, and left. John tried to convince her, but she ignored him. Simultaneously, Fret sadly remembered when she was playing with the infected kids. They are also why Fret is eager to find the cure. Returning to the present, the now confined Fret stares into the space when they suddenly hear something outside. Then she discovers there is an air feed from the panel by the ceiling. She uses the hose to open the panel and finds a vent. As she looks outside, she sees an old man from another chamber. Fret asks him if he knows where they are, but the man does not have any ideas. Another man from the other tank responds to her. He optimistically says someone wheeled out the woman from another tank, making the old man think he is next to be released. Fret gets worried, as they need to get out as soon as possible. The old man is optimistic. He responds that they should not think about the cure for coral-like disease anymore, as they are up for something better. Suddenly, they hear some noise from the gate opening. Fret sees the armored personnel pulling the metal stretcher, with the old man lying on it. She keeps asking them, but they ignore her like deaf as they take the old man out. The scene zooms out, and we see how Fret is confined in the metal chamber. Her memories suddenly flash. She saw the kids in the laboratory, and her encounter with John, who showed he is already infected. Back to the present, Fret hears John talking with another man about the freezer dreams, a dream which looks real. Then John introduces Fret as his associate, working as the parasitologist for the coral fungicide. Suddenly, they hear someone whimpering as the metal chamber gets down. Fret calms the screaming woman and instructs her to pull out the intubation in her mouth so that she can breathe. Then John recognizes that the woman is their co-worker, and the woman is also shocked to hear Fret in another chamber. The woman is looking for a boy, so Fret asks what happened to the boy's treatment. The woman tells them that they have run out of options, so they agree to put him in preservation in the chamber. Moments later, Fret hears some noise from a man screaming. She tries to process the sound and imagines a brutally painful procedure done to the man. She wobbles the chamber by forcefully bumping herself from side to side, but she passes out as the chamber overturns. After a few seconds, she gains consciousness and rolls the chamber from inside. Then she detaches the hose in her breast and tries to sit properly in the chamber. As she peeks through the vent, she sees someone wearing a metal uniform and hears a man from the vault. Fret sees an infected old woman lying on the floor. She tries to communicate with her and tells her she can help, but she needs to get out of the chamber first. 
The old woman cannot use her mouth anymore due to the coral virus infection, a slime-like spreading on her skin. Just then, the armored personnel drags the old woman to a shaft in the wall. As the old woman whimpers, Fret gets shocked and frightened by what she has witnessed. Suddenly, John curiously asks what she saw, so Fret tells them that the old woman was afflicted and got discarded through the machine. A man in another chamber freaks out by that. Fret listens as the woman in another chamber, their co-worker, explains how the coral disease affects the human body. Shockingly, the woman reveals that the disease changes the person as it spreads through direct contact and germinates through the skin until it covers the whole body. After that, it will penetrate deeper into the blood, creating a casing over the body like a slime-like organism. Later, Fret tries to break the chamber and find some exit by kicking the wall. The pounding of the chamber reminded her of when she caught her ex-husband John having a fleshly affair in their room with their colleague. When Fret kicks the chamber forcefully, her consciousness returns to the present, where she hears John apologizing for what he did. She willingly accepts his apology. When she does not hear John responding anymore, she worries and intensely kicks the chamber. Successfully, Fret opens the chamber, but the armored personnel discovers her shortly. When she asks to speak with the authority, the personnel turns on the fog, but Fret manages to strike the personnel's leg. She immediately leaves and walks into the room, where she gets paralyzed and stares at the blinking light that afflicts her like some procedure is being done on her face, and then she screams out loud. Fret's body has been transformed into a metal suit. Like a Cyberman, she is wearing a metal suit. She walks and picks up the ring. When she turns around, another armored man is watching her. He removes his mask and reveals his face. Apparently, it is her colleague, and he asked her to do the same. Meanwhile, the other personnel opens the chamber, while the woman in the pod screams, asking for her son. Shockingly, as they open the vault, the boy inside has already changed his form due to the infection. The skin has melted into a horrible sticky slime that engulfs his body. The woman hears her son sniffling, so she cries, begging for her son's life and reassuring him, without knowing that the personnel discards him into the shaft. It reveals that the machine where they put people's bodies is not used for transfusion or antifreeze as promised to them in the laboratory, but it's just used to press and shatter the infected body. The woman cries as she hears her son's last whimper, so John tries to calm her down by telling her a lie that he witnessed and sees the boy, assuring her that the kid is okay. After that, we see Fret's memories flashback when she observed her ex-husband, John, flirting with their colleague. Suddenly, she noticed an experimental hamster and realized her revenge. So while John was sleeping at home, Fred injected something into his cock, and the moment he woke up, he started to feel strange. It implies that it is the reason why John got infected. Going back to the chamber, the woman asks John about her son. Another man doubts him, so he asks about the color of the lights in the vase, as Fret once mentioned that the color in the vase indicates something. They are worried as the light signals their condition or if they will get helped by the personnel. When another man asks John about the color of the lights he saw, he cannot respond as he suddenly feels ill. So the man asks if he is sick. John coughs, finds it difficult to speak, and cannot even see the color of the lights. John cannot answer as he feels guilty, and his condition worsens, making him difficult to speak. So the man laughs as he proves that John is lying, which makes the woman cry in disappointment. While we gradually see John's infected body has changed, the woman cries as she regrets believing in everything John told her, revealing that she followed John's command, who promised to help her son if she put Fret in the chamber too. The woman cries, she feels guilty as she knows Fret could have helped them with the cure, only if she did not follow John and locked her up. The other man is shocked and disappointed after hearing about their terrible actions and deals. Right then, an armored personnel has been listening to them, and it is Fret. She then opens John's chamber and releases him. John's body is gradually changing. Coral-like organisms already dominate his leg, making him unable to stand. John tries his best to crawl away from the personnel as he screens Fret's name. He begs and asks questions, but he does not get any response. He screams, asking where Fret is. When Fret comes closer to John, another armored personnel arrives. The armored personnel drags John hooked on his stomach, and Fret tries to pull him, which makes his wrist melt. The armored personnel pins Fret on the wall, and since the personnel drags John by his feet, it melts and gets cut off. Then memories flash back to when John runs with Fret, and when Fret discovers something from a metal ring. Back to the present, John begs the armored personnel, which is about to put him in the machine. Suddenly, Fred arrives, so John crawls back as she puts the personnel in the machine and starts to roll. Seconds later, the armored personnel returns, attacks her from the back, and sets up the machine. 
Fret quickly walks toward the engine and puts the personnel's head in the machine while it is about to press, which crumples his head and kills him. Then Fret returns to John, who struggles to open his eyes. She drops the ring as she reveals that it is her, which makes him feel relieved. After that, as Fret takes him using the stretcher, John cries and recalls how he likes Fret and that he knows she aims to save the world. Then Fret starts the procedure on John's body and the machine. Simultaneously, their good memories flash back to when they talked about working together, since Fret revealed that she is into slime. John's company researches a slime-like disease, as his company aims to save rich old people through science and technology, which implies that the plague is actually caused by their failed experiments. Back to the present, the machine fixes John's appearance and removes the slime-like on his skin while Fret welds some metal. Then, she attaches a double mask to John's face. Moments later, we see John in a metal suit, struggling as he walks. Apparently, he is transformed like the armored personnel, who are like a Cyberman struggling to speak. The metal suit is used to preserve their body and protect them from disease. In the earlier scene in the chamber, it looks as if Fret will kill John as a punishment for his disloyalty, but she forgives her ex-husband at last, and even helps him live through that transformation. Meanwhile, the man in the chamber struggles as the symptoms worsen. He cannot feel his body anymore while the woman whimpers. They are both helpless and hopeless in their current situation. So he is convinced to believe that nothing in life is meant to last. Suddenly, the man hears the chamber as Fred arrives. She opens the boy's chamber, recalls her encounter with him in the quarantine facility, and gets emotional, which indicates that the boy has either gone or transformed into another organism. The film ends with Fret picking up the flower, the same one that John gave to her, and which she uses for some of his experiments. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.